How does one understand what is heat wave? Heat wave is basically when the temperatures are higher for more than two days in a row. If I were to ask you to give five basic tips to our listeners as to how to beat the heat, what would your recommendations be? First of all is to stay hydrated. Avoid stepping outside between the hottest time, that is 12 to 4 p.m. Is it really too late? Can we still salvage this situation? We can definitely salvage the situation. Hi everybody, a very warm welcome to you all from UNICEF Studios and today we are here to talk about a very relevant topic which is about soaring temperatures in Delhi and around. Why is it getting so hot in Delhi? We have touched almost 50 degrees Celsius in Delhi. Srinagar, which is a traditionally cooler place, is getting hot. Kerala reported 5 degrees above the normal temperature range. What is really happening? Why is India getting so hot? We have Sandeep Thakkar here, who is working with the climate change team in UNICEF, and he is going to help us demystify some of these crucial topics. Thank you so much, Sandeep, for being here with us today. Thank you, Arushi. So Sandeep, you mentioned about heat wave. So if we were to break it down into simple terms, how does one understand what is heat wave? So heat wave is basically when the temperatures are uh, higher for more than two days in a row. And if we talk about plains or if we talk about coastal region, there are different set of criteria for that. For plains, if the temperatures are more than 40 degrees okay. for a particular station for more than two days, it's considered a heat wave. For coastal region, it's more than 37 degrees Celsius for more than two days. And mm -hmm. for hilly region, it's more than 30 degrees Celsius. So this is based on the absolute temperature of a particular station. Mm -hmm. But there's also another criteria. Uh, we have now historical records of every area and every for that particular time period. So if the temperature variation is more than 4.5 degrees from the normal, it's considered as a heat wave. And if it is more than 6.5 degrees above the normal, that's considered a severe heat wave. All right. And these are becoming more frequent because we have been emitting a lot of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases which are getting trapped in the atmosphere. So the sun rays which are coming to the earth mm. and getting part of it is getting reflected back. Normally they would exit the earth's atmosphere. But now, because of all the carbon dioxide of the vehicles, of the industries that we have emitted, the gases are at the top of the atmosphere and they are not allowing the heat to ex escape the Earth's atmosphere. So it's trapped inside and it's getting more and more hot. And that is why we are seeing rising temperatures over the years. All right. This is very helpful, Sandeep, because we keep using these terms interchangeably and you have broken this down into very simple terms, which is easily understandable and relatable as well. Sandeep, while all of us are trying to protect ourselves from the severe heat and this extreme environment, our most vulnerable demographic is the young children. So we are the caregivers for these children. So why are children more vulnerable? And the second part to my question is, what can we do better as caregivers to protect our children? So children are more vulnerable because uh, as a growing body, their organ systems are not that well developed. So their blood circulation, their heart, they are still in the developing phase. So they cannot sweat as much as adults. The surface area is higher. Many times they play outside and they are exposed to higher uh, sun exposure. Mm. Also, they are more active than us. So their metabolism yes. doesn't work the way our metabolism works. And it takes more time for them to get used to a certain temperature. For adults, it takes a shorter, maybe two or three days or five days. For children, it takes 10 to 14 days to get oh. used to a particular temperature range. So that is why they are more vulnerable. They don't adapt so fast to that temperature. How we can protect them is uh, they are dependent on us for their food, water and shelter needs. Correct. And they might not request water if, if they are not thirsty. But it's important to keep them hydrated, to make them wear loose fitting clothes like we discussed and to keep them in a shaded area. If they are going outside, uh, to limit the number of play hours, to keep them inside during the hottest time of the day and to consult 
the local doctor if they develop any symptoms basically to keep a watchful eye on them and yeah. to prevent them from going outside the house during the peak uh, yes. heat hours yeah and uh, sandeep if i were to ask you to give five basic tips to our listeners as to how to beat the heat what would your recommendations be first of all is to stay hydrated uh, we could use locally available fluids like uh, coconut water lime water so that when we sweat a lot our bodies don't get dehydrated if we keep drinking lot of water second would be to stay in shaded areas as much as possible and if we are stepping outside avoid stepping outside between the hottest time that is 12 to 4 pm third would be to uh, wear loose fitting clothes that are breathable um, they are light colored because then they don't absorb that much heat fourth would be to be aware of the symptoms if we have any symptoms of heat related illness we should be aware and recognize it and take necessary first aid measures fifth would be to uh, take care of our vulnerable population that would be children elderly because they are more vulnerable we have to look after them True. so that is one more thing uh, that i would say is important Thank you, Sandeep. And you mentioned about having coconut water or uh, drinks with a high sodium or a sugar content. But as a generation, we are becoming more health conscious, and we are trying to avoid sugar. Yeah. Some people are failing miserably at it, but most of us are trying to avoid sugar. So, for people who are strictly shying away from sugar or are diabetic, are there any substitutes that you would like to share or recommend for them? So. sugar is not that much important but it's important to have the salt part of it right. because when we sweat salt is also excreted mm. in our with the water so sugar is something to avoid the hypoglycemia level even for diabetics we can have a low sugar drink like nimbu pani or plain mm. water Without with salt sugar. yeah all right Uh, those are good points thanks sandeep uh, but let's say there is somebody who has to be out there because all of us cannot stay indoors all the time so let's say somebody has been exposed to high temperatures or the sun for an extended period of time and they suddenly start feeling giddy or uncomfortable or uneasy so what is the first reaction or the first response that we should be uh, how to deal with that situation so this is uh, called as heat stress when the body is not able to release the heat from the uh, and first thing is to be aware and recognize that this is due to heat correct all of us have the responsibility to easily identify that is the e part uh, we have to identify the symptoms of heat related illness like mm. you said feeling giddy feeling mm. uh, light headed mm. sweating excessively or having a rash in our body sometimes if severe cases we have nausea vomiting or even unconsciousness so these are the symptoms of heat related illness and it's important that everyone who is uh, exposed to these know that these are the symptoms and identify that these are the uh, this is due to heat so basically being alert being yes. aware and taking immediate action and uh, going to a health facility immediately and not ignoring the signs yes. something uh, that is happening to your body is not right right yes. and i think we should especially cater to the young children uh, the elderly the people living on the top floors in urban areas the people on the streets i think those are the most susceptible demographic right yes. so we need to take special care of for them so sandeep as individuals who still care about the only habitable planet that we have for now and uh, in order to do our bit uh, is it really too late can we still salvage this situation for our generations to come for our present uh, generation our young uh, kids that we have or is it too late and we have lost hope we can definitely salvage the situation and uh, at individual level we can uh, reduce our carbon footprint uh, that is the light we use so we can replace our old tube lights and bulbs with led bulbs we can adapt solar energy solar power uh, panels for our heating and for our lighting sure. we can also keep in mind while we are designing our homes to keep it in such a way that the cross ventilation is good mm. that way our air pollution levels and our heat levels are maintained we can 
paint our rooftops with a solar reflective white paint so that the heat is not trapped inside our house and that reduces the number of hours we have to use our air conditioner. So that is something which we can do at individual level and we can also plant more trees within our communities. The areas where there are more trees, we have cooler areas and air quality is better. So that can be done. Staying informed as an individual is very important. So mm. we have to follow IMD's bulletins. We have to follow Ministry of Health and Family Welfare that issues advisories. We can follow that and we can pass the message to those who don't get it or are not likely to get it. So we can play that role. As community, when we are designing our urban spaces or our uh, common areas, we can have more green spaces, more walkable areas so that our transport is more sustainable. Our fashion could be more sustainable. Our food industries could be more sustainable so that we would reduce the waste and e-waste. So government of uh, India has a mission life program mm. that is lifestyle for environment which is centered around saving energy, saving water, reducing our waste, adopting a sustainable lifestyle. So that is something which we can go to and look up. I think it has more to do with the shift in thinking and a behavior yeah. change because even a small contribution can lead to bigger impact. So let's say if I pick up a disposable glass to have water each time that is not very environment friendly, yeah. I should carry my water bottle at all times. Yeah. And let's say if I'm driving from Noida to Gurgaon all by myself, I should start thinking around carpooling options yes. and such. So I think at an individual level, it it's basically a shift in behavior and these are the things that we need to constantly remind ourselves so that it comes and inculcates in our daily behavior, I think. Yes, and uh, yeah. also Arushi, what we can do at individual level is when we are inside our homes, mm. we can have a misting fan or we can wet our curtains mm. so that the air that is flowing through the house is moist and the oh. temperature in our rooms is reduced. Um, to keep our windows and doors open so that our homes are more ventilated and the temperature is not trapped within the house. The moisting the curtains is a very good yes. idea. Never never came across our minds. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, thank you so much for sharing those insights. These were very helpful tips and I'm sure our listeners will benefit from this conversation. And uh, the message that I received from you and from this entire conversation is that climate change is serious. It is no longer a high-level talk that's restricted to researchers and scientists. It has become personal. It affects us. It affects each and every individual. It affects our children and it affects the younger generation that is yet to come. So I think it's a very crucial topic that we discussed today. And thank you so much for all the insights that you shared. Thank you. Thank you.